What is going down, you guys? It's your boy, Jimmy C. Bringing you guys the latest and greatest. Well, maybe not greatest, but either way, which way. So, this weekend, we got a pretty interesting fight between Cannoneer and Borayo. In which there was no wrestling. That's right, no wrestling. If you watched the fight, towards the end, you can hear Borayo saying that, you know, he's not just a wrestler. Makes you wonder, though, why is he saying that? Why is he saying that he's not just a wrestler? Well, he wants to not just to be known as a person that takes you down. But I think there's a little bit more to that. You don't have to look very far. Recently released UFC fighter Muhammad Mukayev did mention something to where I believe he was told... And I'm not sure by whom, but he was told that he needed to do less wrestling. And if you watched the last fight that Muhammad Makayev had versus Manel Cap, he was the one definitely initiating more of the striking more than usual. It's unfortunate that this guy didn't get the contract again. That was his last fight, but he did mention that he was told not to wrestle. So it's interesting that Kyle Borayo didn't wrestle. So what's next for this guy? Well, he's a young fighter. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. He's from he's from Brazil. Nicknamed The Natural. He's only 31 years old. And he fights in the middleweight division. That means he's up there with Adesanya, Robert Whitaker, uh, Vittori, um, you can match this guy up against everyone. But is was the fight versus Cannoneer enough to earn him that shot versus Izzy? I don't think so. I don't think it has earned him that shot. Because if you look at his other wins, I mean, he he beat Paul Craig before uh, he beat Jared Cannoneer. And then he fought Maga, Maga Madoff and... Oh, let's just... I can't even mention these guys. I can't even mention half of these guys. But either which way, his resume is not... I'm not going to say it's not impressive because the guy, the guy's like on a win streak. You know, he's he's just... He's 17-1 and one right now and he hasn't lost in the UFC. He's calling out big names after he just beat Cannoneer. But I got to tell you, Cannoneer... Cannoneer was doing okay in that fight. I want to say he was picking his shots. He was being very patient to be honest with you i think he was just trying to keep an eye out for that takedown which never came cannonier never went for a takedown himself just no grappling it was pretty much a stand-up fight and i want to say it was kind of going his way i mean he damaged his eye pretty well but man kyle was just picking him apart putting some beautiful combinations together just piecing him up could they have stopped that fight at the end, I probably, but it's Cannoneer. You know, the dude's been fighting in the UFC for a very long time. Most of the refs have seen him fight, and they know whether he's in danger or not. And, you know, also this being the main event fight, you know, it's they're going to make it go on as long as possible. So the fact that it didn't get stopped, it does not surprise me. What did surprise me was Cannoneer kind of doing well until he wasn't I, I don't know to me he just looks slow um and he has been looking slow lately for me it's uh cannoneer was one of those guys that was considered a dark horse everyone was kind of excited about him because no one knew i mean the guy came down from heavyweight then went down to light heavyweight and then went down to middleweight and you could see the progression in all of these stages and it seemed he had finally found his home here in middleweight but it's just lately he's just been not performing as well i feel like he holds back a lot and it's pretty frustrating to watch at times it's kind of like watching cheeto vera fight sometimes where you know he's got he's got it in him but for some reason they just don't want to pull the trigger i i, I just don't i don't understand especially this being the main event fight you know this is a young, hungry wolf that's coming up. He's, he's coming for all the marbles. And it's still just 
kind of feeling like a little bit of a lackluster performance on Cannoneers. And can you put it on age? Yeah, you can put it on age. He's been fighting for a minute too. Um, he could just be worn out. He might just need like a year or two off and then have one more crack at the title. So what's next for Cannoneer? I, I just think he should just take a break reassess find out if he's really hungry or if he's just doing this for a check um so yeah that's what i got to say about that fight there were other exciting um fights on that card as well but none really stuck out too much at least none worthy of me wanting to talk about it right now because just didn't do homework on that shit but i do have something to look forward to and that's september 14th Marab versus sean o'malley and a lot of people want to say Sean's going to be able to find that chin, find that target early on. And Marib has been known to get caught. But the dude's really good at scrambling and being able to recover. And I think if he does get caught, it's going to be early on in, in the first round, maybe even second round. But I think he'll be able to overcome that and just make it a boring fight just take him to the ground i hope it's not boring i hope it's exciting i hope he once he takes him to the ground if he does take him to the ground i hope he tries to finish it not just lay and pray because i'm gonna tell you right now that's gonna be a boring ass fight and i'm not looking forward to it at all now rumor rumor around the mill is Benil Darius is aiming for a November return. Not many people care about Benil Darius. It's just a rumor, so I figured I'd throw it in here. And the rumor is he might fight Patty Pimblet. Of course, it's just a rumor because even Benil has came out and said that he hasn't heard anything about this, but he'd be willing and open to a fight with Patty. This would be a good fight for Patty. I think it'll set him up right there for the title contention. And also, it's not really throwing him directly into the fire. I feel like Benil's kind of right there in the middle. I feel like Benil's kind of going through what Cannoneer's going through as well right now. He's at that age where he's just... He's kind of refining his technique, but it just, for some reason... It just doesn't flow as well as it should when it comes to really high caliber fighters, especially those strikers, man. They just, yeah, I don't know what it is. He's just, has his kryptonite, that chin, man. And it could be age. It, it could be age. Um, it could be him also being worn out. The fight game is very limited, very time restricted. You know, you put your body through so much during training and then you put your body through so much during the fight and to recover after the fight and then you go back right into it again and it's it's been going on for years and years your body can only take so much so those breaks really important and also you do eventually peak in the fight game it's unfortunate i've been watching this for since like fucking 2006 chuck liddell randy couture bj penn sean shirt oh yeah way the fuck back and i and i've seen it i've seen these guys come up hit their peak and then go right back down and it's not anything bad it's not anything that's inevitable it's not something that'll stain your career in any kind of way it's just the way it is it's just life um, so, Murad versus Sean, it's going to be a great fight, and it's also a really great fight card. Um, a lot of people are crying about the prices. Well, yeah, it's the venue you're paying for, the experience, uh, not so much of the, as the actual fights, um, which is why they didn't get McGregor and Chandler. Not not just because McGregor is hurt and or none of that shit, but pretty much because... McGregor's just cost way too fucking much. And then to top it off, they have to pay this venue as well. I mean, this is the reason why it's being sponsored. 
you know, just because it, it costs so much fucking money. And even Dana has came out and said that he's not going to do this a once in a lifetime thing. So I don't know. Uh, moving on, though, I wanted to talk something real quick about DC. Oh, boy, uh, Daniel Cormier. Now, I know you guys know who DC is because he's always, you know, he's one of the fight analysts. And something that really stuck out to me was a little bit of a trash talk that he's got going on, especially with Buckley. And I saw a post in where he pretty much just goes full on just shit talk mode to Joaquin Buckley. And, and you know, Buckley responds to this. And I thought it was interesting because DC as a professional, not as a fighter, should really, really watch what he says to these fighters because... One, he's not the boss. Two, he's no longer fighting. He's out of shape. So one one slip of you're going to get caught out there. I'm not threatening. I'm just saying someone can take the words the wrong way. Catch you slipping out there, man. On site is on site. You ain't, you ain't at that age no more. And, and I got to tell you, it's, it's very unprofessional. I feel like it's very unprofessional for any of these analysts to jump online and start talking shit immediately to the fighters. Let the fighters say what they want to say. Now, if you have your own YouTube channel, whatever the fuck, your own podcast, and you want to go on there and say what you want, again, I still feel, as a person who is employed by the UFC, you need to watch what you say and keep it professional at all times. Because you work for the UFC therefore you represent the UFC and I understand Dana White wants to sit there and say oh well you know freedom of speech and I don't put my guys on leashes and yet I I go back to this Muhammad Lakayev thing because it really irks me that he says that you know it wasn't just things that he did but it was also things that he said and it's just it's just very contradictory and kind of hypocritical on Dana White's and if you're going to keep somebody in check on what they're going to say you need to keep everybody in check in what they're going to say don't just say oh we let this person go because you know we didn't like the things they were doing and the things they were saying yet other people are doing and saying worse shit you know so it's kind of a it's kind of fucked up. He's a little bit of a favoritism going on. But, you know, neither here nor there. Don't give a shit. I just found it really interesting because I saw his response to this. And, and it made a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense. But uh, another rumor that's going around is Henry Cejudo is thinking about doing a flyweight return. And, man, you know, it's funny because... When Cejudo fought in the flyweight, he was all about saving the division. And this was around the time TJ Dillashaw was fighting before he popped. And Cejudo was going to fight him and represent the entire flyweight division. And then the dude just like gives up and moves up. And <laughs> it was weird, but somehow the division stayed. And now Cejudo is aiming a flyweight return. Now, what waits for him down in flyweight? Well, the only person I can really think of is Brandon Moreno. And if you don't know, these two have beef. Going all the way back to Moreno was first starting. I mean, these guys were friends. It gives me Masvidal, Kobe vibes. Where these two were friends and somehow something happened they eventually went their separate ways. Next thing you know, Henry Cejudo is training David Singh Figueredo to fight Brandon Moreno, who was going to be fighting for the belt. And I don't know about you, but if a homie is training with this person that I'm going to fight, so-called homie, is training with a person that I'm supposed to be fighting, and this person knows me clearly because he's my homie, He's going to know some shit. 
I'm not, I'm not gonna like that. I'm not gonna like that one bit. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna like it. And so I can see why Brandon Moreno is a little bit sour about this. So can Henry Cejudo do a flyweight return? Yes, he absolutely can. He's small enough. Can he hang with Brandon Moreno? I'm gonna say, yeah, he'll be able to hang with Brandon Moreno. Henry has really great cardio and really great wrestling. But, and there's my butt. Fight game, brothers. Fight game. You are limited on time. Henry Cejudo's clock's been ticking, man. He's been ticking. The dude took a long ass break at his prime when he was on the top with the belts. And for what reason? I think he sat out thinking Dana was going to come with something a little bit sweeter, and he never did. And now the guy's just fighting for scraps. It's sad. It's sad to see his mistake. And I hope other fighters out there are learning. See, this is why I'm saying that the fight game is very finicky. Not only are you limited with the time that you have to fight, but you are also limited to when it comes to training your body so you do have to take those breaks but you can't take that much of a break because eventually your body will break down and tear down and age will catch up with you and you trying to do those things that you did back before it's not it's just not going to work your body's going to be beat up your body's going to be even more sore it's going to take longer to recover you're going to be asking yourself is this really fucking worth it again and when you've accomplished what you've accomplished and you get to a certain point in your life do you really have that heart that drive and that fight to push you through to get you to that next round or get you out of that submission or help you get up from that knockout and shake it off and come back and win like do you really have it in your heart i don't know it's it it's um to me i, I feel like you got mcgregor right there as prime example you know, you don't, I, I believe it's gone. Once it's once you leave it, it's gone. You peak, it's gone. So, can he beat Moreno? Probably. He'll be able to get it done, for sure. So, Henry Cejudo, Flyway versus Moreno. Sounds interesting. I'm down. I don't give a shit. Wonder Boy is no NMF. No nice motherfucker, Wonder Boy. At least Buckley wants to call Cap on Wonder Boy's niceness. It's funny, because... Calling Wonder Boy Ellen DeGeneres to me is, it's funny. Because everyone knows Ellen DeGeneres. You know, she had her own show and she seems like she's a really nice person. But then rumors started coming out about how she's just a real cunt. A real fucking bitch to work with. And, and it turns out to be true because she ran. She went and hid. It, her show got canceled. I mean... All kinds of shit, but do I think Wonder Boy is faking it? I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. You know, you think you know a person, but then, you know, behind closed doors, how are they to your face and how they are behind closed doors? Two different things. Like they say, we have, we are two different people. You know, the person that you know and then the person that we are behind closed doors that nobody knows are secrets. So does Wonder Boy maybe have a bmf inside him maybe you know he's only human he's only human but i i do gotta say that it kind of rubs me the wrong way when people want to pretend like you don't know what you're saying when they're speaking slang it's kind of an insult it's almost like you're trying to demean the person like oh, i don't understand what you're saying please clarify speak english Motherfucker, you know what I'm saying. You're trying to catch this smoke. That only means one thing. Izzy is hurt. Alex Pereira came out and said that he thinks that Izzy fought injured. And Izzy just kind of reaffirmed it. You know, you, you have these two guys who've known each other for so long. have had so many fights together. Trained for each other. Fought each other. You're bound to know that person. And when Pereira came out with that, and not Izzy, Izzy never said anything. Alex Poatan Pereira was the first one to say that. And I remember reading it on X. 
and thinking, that's weird. Why would he say that? Because then it made me want to go to see if Izzy came out and said anything. And he hadn't. He hadn't said anything until now where he does admit that he was injured. And I thought that was pretty cool that they, these two fighters kind of know each other that well where they can tell. Because I personally didn't see Izzy injured in any kind of way. Did he look slightly off? Maybe just slightly off. Seemed pretty on, though. I mean, the dude was in there going in and out, doing his fakes, setting him up. Um, it was just DDP's night, dude. This is DDP's night. I don't think it, it really uh, hurt him that much, but I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. And yo, what is up with fighters getting kicked out of the fight event? This is, this is So I remember seeing Johnny Walker walking around the street out there once, but I feel like recently I, I've seen other people came out and said that, yeah, like once your fight is up, they're like, hey, sorry, we're booked. We don't have any free. You got to go. Is there no green room where you could put these guys where they can rest? These guys just went in and fought a fucking hard fight. Made you thousands of dollars. You mean to tell me you can't get like, I don't know, a fucking medium sized ballroom with like dividers or some shit or something where they can all get together and hang out and chill. You can't do that for these guys. I understand some fighters can't stay. They got to go to the hospital. Other fighters decide to just go home. Other fighters do have tickets, I guess. I don't fucking know how that works. Which is weird to me that they have to buy tickets to their own events. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand how this shit works. But I feel like the UFC is slowly just going downhill. Is it me? Or is is it? does it feel like the UFC is slowly going downhill? Not just by the fights that they're putting together but by all the other bullshit that they're doing with like the rankings like Dana White going on and on and on about how John Jones is number one pound for pound like who gives a fuck dude dude hasn't fought in a goddamn while you wanna sit there and say oh well he's been injured well last time I checked that doesn't fucking matter you're active you're active that's it John Jones was not active for a long time came back fought one time and then he's inactive so crying about that shit, then you have fighters are just completely jumping ranks, fighting for the belts. I'm not saying, I'm not pointing like, you know, I know Khalil Roundtree did this, and I have a video where I broke that down as to why I think they, why I think they did it, and why I think it is the right choice at least right now. Dana White just bashing fighters. Um, you're, you're hearing about fighters saying that they don't want them to wrestle, and I don't know, dude. It's just something weird is going on. And I don't know if it's Dana that's heading out and he's just not giving a fuck or some things are about to change. I don't know what's going on, but something's happening. Um, I, I feel like the UFC has very few, very few interesting high caliber star fights left in their pockets. Because the route they're going right now, letting somebody go like Muhammad Makayev, an undefeated fighter, it's weird to me the route UFC is going but I don't know um, and then if you guys don't know check out my short Bilal Muhammad's new post is a new country song about Usman and that shit was hilarious man um, if you guys haven't seen it check it out it's funny uh, it just pretty much goes on and just talks shit about how Usman's old <laughs> which is really interesting because I feel like that was like the main theme on this on this uh, video today but let me know what you guys think are you guys excited for Murad versus Sean who do you guys think is gonna win do you guys feel like DC is being a professional talking all that shit um, are you guys excited to see to see Benil fight Patty or what about Henry versus Brandon Moreno do you guys think Wonder Boy is a no nice motherfucker and he's an actually a bad motherfucker let me know what you think let me know what you think, because like I said, I, I want to do these things more often. And I really would like feedback, mainly because that's why I do it, just because I don't have anyone to talk MMA with. But I'll catch you guys on the next one. I really appreciate you guys sticking through this, if you did stick through this. Until the next one, take care.